I'd like to maybe start off with just a brief question about what year the company kind of started. Sure. Well, um, my mother's parents immigrated from Nazi Germany in 1937, and my grandfather bought the business in 1938, and uh, it was called Rosenfeld Hat Company. It was a small business that that brought hats from factories in the East Coast of the United States here to Portland and distributed them. Uh, but he, having come having come from Nazi Germany and being Jewish, he didn't want a Jewish sounding name, so he named it what every business in Portland is named, which is Columbia. Well, that was a wonderful selection, <laughs> considering that then Amazon comes along 40 years later and decides that they'll take the river in South America. <laughs> but Columbia is a wonderful name. I agree. It's the, it's the biggest river that goes into the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, on the entire northern and southern hemisphere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. So they named did they they named it then Columbia Sportswear. No, they actually called it was named Columbia Hat Company. Columbia Hat Company. And okay. and all through the fifties and even into the sixties, the the primary business was selling headwear. Mm -hmm. Men's mm -hmm. headwear, you know, whether it be mm -hmm. dress hats or work hats or baseball caps or and then in the late fifties men quit wearing hats, so mm -hmm. They had to cast about to find some other product to make which or sell. And so we tried to f many different kinds of products, but uh, we ended up settling on, on fishing vests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, it was a product my mother designed. And Your mother designed it? Because yeah. I, I wore it. The steelhead vest was perfect. And even 50 years later, I think I occasionally see people who are still wearing the original Columbia vest. It was made out of... A, a really strong, was it duck cotton? Yeah, heavy canvas. Could, could you say a few words about your father? Because I only sure. got a chance to meet him a few times. Yeah, I mean, he was an incredibly uh, hard-working guy. He grew up in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Hmm. And my grandfather, his father, uh, worked in the steel mills there in, in, uh, hmm. in the Pittsburgh area. And then when the Depression hit, they... Everybody was out of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He took the family west. They first went to San Diego, and then they ended up in Tucson, where my grandfather went to work in the Hughes Aircraft Factory. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad went wow. into the service and yeah. uh, met my mom after the war. And my mom always said uh, they met under a table at a fraternity party. <laughs> so, well, your father had a great personality and your mother too, so they must have been a dynamic <laughs> duo. It was a match made in heaven. That's, so. that's great. Was your was your father at, interested in, you know, anything like fishing? Or, or Yeah, my dad, really, the two things he did for relaxation were to fish and play golf and he mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he didn't play much golf but he fished quite a bit you know when he wasn't working mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and unfortunately you know at at the he unfortunately died quite young at age 47 in in 1970 yeah and he just he worked all the time so mm -hmm. he didn't have as much time to fish as he would have liked but um, yeah i mean it was he didn't teach you how to put up worm on a hook or anything like well, that. Well, you know, I think I probably did learn how to put a worm on a hook from him, but I, <laughs> most of what our, what my early fishing was, um, we lived within a mile or so of the Willamette River, so I would go fish for carp and for yeah. crappies. And, uh, yeah, that's what I was doing too on the Milwaukee side. Yeah, yes. and then and we then. would fish together, surf fish for, for pogies. Well, after your father passed away, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but I understand your mother asked you to come back and help her with the business? Well, yeah, I mean, my plan... Because you, you were at University of Oregon. I, yeah, my dad died December of my senior year. So my plan was to go to law school right after, right after college. And um, frankly, I wouldn't have made a very good attorney. I wasn't a very good student, and uh, you know. I'm it's a good thing I asked you the question because I've told people that you were thinking of being a journalist. No, well, but you actually, were thinking of law. Okay. <laughs> no, but I, but, I, 
I studied journalism at, at the university. Oh, okay. And then I came home and helped to run the business. And of course, the business was tiny and got smaller mm -hmm. once I came to help. So your mother, when you came back to work in the company, if I recall right, she asked me if I would mind taking you out fly fishing. Yes. And do you kind of remember that? I remember, how, who could forget that first day? My first fishing trip, fly fishing trip, was with Frank. We drove, I think it must have been in your Volkswagen. To, could have been. Uh, I, I, <laughs> to Warm Springs, and this was even prior to the Indian tribe requiring a specific license. I think we... Yes. You could just drive there and yeah. fish, and uh, I think we camped actually. That, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so literally, my first cast, which I didn't really know how to cast, but I sort of flopped the lure out, the, the fly out, and bird grabbed it and flew straight up in the air. And was, is that supposed to happen? So it's amazing. Yeah, amazing. It's amazing it doesn't happen more frequently, yeah. considering those swallows <clears throat> and the way they are so agile flying yeah. around getting those insects. I mean, the work. year my dad died, the company was doing a million dollars in volume. Would that have been like 72 or? No, it was 1970, December it, of 70. It was December of 70 then, okay. And in 1971, the volume was a half a million. Okay. And then things got bad because my dad had just taken out a loan from the SBA Mm -hmm. uh, and the bank finally in 1974, 75 called our note and said, you know, you guys are going bankrupt, you don't mm -hmm. really know what you're doing, which was totally accurate. And um, so we, we tried to sell the business, we couldn't find any buyers, and the banker said, okay, I'll give you a few more months to turn this around, otherwise we'll have to liquidate, and what you really need is a, is a a business advisory group, some people who would be willing to help you understand how to do business. And he said, we just loaned some money to some guys starting a shoe business out in Beaver. Maybe I can get one of these guys from this shoe company. <laughs> oh, really? A shoe company in Beaver? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so we had one of the early Nike employees come on a board no of advisors kidding. Yeah, and said, you know. How fortunate. Wow. So that's how we, we were started focusing on the product and on marketing and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then less time on stuff yeah, that just so you're, didn't matter. you're kind of mentored by uh, by Nike yeah that, that's really neat <clears throat> yeah Tim we've been kind of talking about the history of the company and and uh, your relationship and how you kind of helped uh, helped it along and grew it and what what do you see for the future well, you know, we, we've always considered ourselves a growing, a growth company, and so that will hopefully continue. Um, both of my kids are working here uh, at the company, and uh, hopefully there's an opportunity for them to continue to grow the business, and they're, they're much more adept than I am. So <laughs> the prospects are bright. So, Great. Okay. Super. Great. Thanks. Wonder, wonderful. Great seeing you again, Frank. Yeah, that, this, is, this is fantastic.